2.8, the derivative as a function. So far, we've looked at the definition of f prime of a as the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Now we just want to look in general at f prime of x. So instead of looking at the point a, we will be looking at the point x. In example 1, we're going to look at the graph of the function f and use it to sketch a graph of the derivative. So basically how I like to do this is I like to draw one on top of the other. And so here we have the graph of f of x and right below it I like to draw f prime of x. And so what I do is I keep the x coordinates all the same because in this graph I'm drawing x y coordinates and here I'm drawing x and then the slope as my coordinates. So the first things that I like to mark are where the derivative is 0. So I know that the derivative is 0 wherever I have horizontal tangent lines. So at these points here, and this is why I like to draw it right below, I know that I have zeros on my graph of f prime. Basically, if I were to draw on a number line that we've been looking at, we know at the points a, b, and c, we have zeros. We know that the function was decreasing before a, meaning the derivative would have been negative, and I'm just going to draw it down there for a minute and you'll see why. Then between a and b, my function is increasing, meaning my derivative is positive. Between b and c, my function is decreasing the whole time, meaning my derivative is negative. And then from c on, my function is increasing. So, I have a good idea that my graph is going to look like I'm going from negative to positive to negative to positive, so that's why I'm going from negative to positive to negative to positive. I might just want to show my inflection points. It looks like I'm going from concave up to concave down around here, so that might be an inflection point, and so that would mean that I have a local min or local max, and then another inflection point looks like it's happening around there. And so there's my um, minimum. But what I first do is I just mark my zeros. I look at my um, negative and positive region, so I know my graph is going to look something like that. And then I just go and fill in the other appropriate things by looking at the graph. Um, this point right here is just saying, well, if, you know, at this point, P, I have an x coordinate of 5 and it looks like my slope is about 3 halves, then on my f prime graph at the point P, I'm going to mark it with 5 and then the slope, which was 3 halves. And so, you know, that's just what we're doing in graphing the graph of f prime. We're just graphing the slopes. For this function, find f prime and then compare the graphs of f and f prime. Well, we don't need to do our long way since we um, kind of did chapter 3 and chapter 4 and now we're going backwards. We know our power rules so we can just find the derivative quite easily. And so if we go to the next slide, I just have, again, I have one slide under the other because that's how I would like you to look at. You'll look at the graph of f. You'll say, okay, right here, I have a zero right here. I have a zero. If you still like your number line, go for it. What was happening? So just call this A and B for a moment. And so we know that before A, the function was increasing, 
then between A and B, it was decreasing, and then from B on, it was increasing. So now my graph's going to look something like that, and um, everything looks quite symmetric here, and so that's why I have nice symmetry there. And here was my inflection point, and so, you know, that would be my minimum. So um, it's really not too bad. Um, this is something we've looked at before. This is the same slide that I gave you on the 28 to 29 key terms. Just different ways of expressing f prime of x is the same as y prime, which is the same as dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x, df dx, the derivative of the function with respect to x, d dx of f of x. We don't really use those too much in this um, course at all. And then we look at the Leibniz notation, and we can evaluate dy dx evaluated at x equals a, dy dx evaluated at x equals a. Um, you can put just the line, or you can put the bracket, and we'll see a lot more of that later in the course. These are all ways of saying what is f prime at a point a. Differentiability, remember that a function is differentiable if its derivative exists, and we can have differentiability on an interval also. So when we talk about the function f of x equals the absolute value of x, where is it differentiable? Well, let's just look at the piecewise definition. We know that it equals x if x is greater than or equal to 0, and it's the opposite of x if x is less than 0, meaning the derivative is going to be 1 if x is greater than 0, and it's going to be negative 1 if x is less than 0. Why didn't I put greater than or equal to 0 here? Because we don't know if at 0, we don't know which one of the two we should choose. If we go ahead and we look at a graph, it becomes quite obvious because we know this is our function, and so what is a derivative? Well, it is negative 1 the entire time when x is less than 0. And then it jumps to positive 1 for all values greater than 0. And at 0, we have a cusp there. It's not differentiable. We know f prime of 0 does not exist. So where is it differentiable? Everywhere except at x equals 0. So we don't want to include 0 there. And so here's just the graph again. Differentiability and continuity. If f is differentiable at a, then f is continuous at a. In order for it to be differentiable, it must be continuous. However, the converse is false. If the function is continuous, it is not necessarily differentiable. We just saw that with the absolute value of x um, example. The absolute value of x is continuous everywhere. We can draw that function without picking up our pencil. However, we cannot draw its derivative without picking up our pencil, and that's what the failure of differentiability is saying. Some examples of failure of differentiability are as if we have a corner, because look at this. If we took the tangent line here, and then we took the tangent line there, it gives us a big old x not differentiable. Here, well this isn't even continuous, so it's obviously not differentiable. And here we have an undefined um, slope at some point, so when the slope is undefined, we wouldn't be able to draw the derivative at, on the f prime graph, because the slope is undefined. Whenever f is differentiable, if you zoomed in on the function really, really close, you would see that the function right there at that point looks almost linear if you zoom in enough. And that 
linear that little line is um, the slope of the tangent line at that point. And you'll see that at a cusp or somewhere that it fails differentiability. If you zoomed in closer and closer and closer, you're never going to get it looking like a line. If f is a differentiable function, then it's derivative. f prime is also a function. So f prime may have a derivative of its own, which is denoted by f prime prime. In Leibniz notation, and you should be familiar with this, even if you don't want to use it, we're saying that the derivative of the derivative, right, this was f prime of x, and so we're saying the derivative of the derivative, and we just write it as this, and this is f prime prime. So let's go ahead and find f prime prime. Again, we can use our shortcut. We know f prime of x is 3x squared minus 1, and so f prime prime is going to be 6x. So what do we know? We know f prime prime is the slope of f prime, right? f prime prime is the slope of f prime the rate of change of the slope. In other words, it's the rate of change of the rate of change. Key point, remember the derivative is a rate of change. So the second derivative is telling us something about the rate of change of the rate of change. So let's just look at these three functions together. If we have f of x drawn here, then we know that the blue one must be f prime and we know that the gold one must be f prime prime. Something else kind of just neat to note is that if the function is of odd degree then its derivative is going to be of even degree and then its second derivative is going to be again of odd degree. Remember because what are you doing when you're using the power rule? The derivative of x to the n is n times x to the n minus 1 so you're subtracting 1 from the um, degree of the function. So in our last example, if we just interpret this, we can interpret f prime prime as the slope of the curve of f prime. f prime prime is the rate of change of the slope, rate of change of the rate of change of the original curve. When f prime prime is less than zero, we know the function is concave down, meaning that the slope is getting more and more and more negative over time. f prime has a negative slope. So when we talk about position, velocity, acceleration, if s at t is a position function, its first derivative gives us a velocity and the second derivative gives us the acceleration. So let's just interpret this. A car starts from rest and the graph of its position function is shown right here. Use this to graph the velocity and acceleration of the car, which we're going to do on the next slide. And what is the acceleration at t equals 2 seconds? All right, well here's our functions. Let me just relabel them. s of t, v of t, and a of t. And so they're all graphed here. Let's just interpret them for a moment. We see that the position function is increasing the entire time. So we see that s is increasing the entire time, meaning that the velocity should be greater than zero the whole time. These mean the same thing, right? They're synonymous. 
but what's happening to the slope? The rate of change is slowing down over time. So even though it's increasing the entire time, it's increasing at a decreasing rate, which is signified here. The acceleration is still positive the entire time, but it's getting less and less so because it's increasing at a decreasing rate. And remember, the acceleration tells us something about the rate that the velocity is changing at. The fact that the velocity is increasing means that the acceleration is positive. But the fact that it's at a decreasing rate means that the acceleration is getting less positive. And so that's just a really good interpretation of position, velocity, and acceleration. It asks us, what is the acceleration at uh, t equals 2 seconds? Well, you know, it's about 10 feet per second squared, I guess. Higher order derivatives, um, this is just really notation. We can keep going on and on, and so usually we don't want to keep writing f prime, 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 prime. So we denote that as, as this, and any nth derivative as that, and this is in Leibniz notation right here. Um, it all makes good sense. Let's just um, take the derivatives. So... 3x squared minus 6, f prime prime is 6x, f triple prime is 6, and the fourth derivative is just 0. So that's about it for this lesson.